Hello and welcome back to the Angerati studio at European Utility Week. I'm uh, joined by Diana from the European, uh, European Environment Agency. And um, it's very interesting to have you here. And let me explain the context in a, in a second. There's been a lot of talk about uh, customer engagement, consumer engagement from the utility side. But what is always interesting is consumer behavior. Uh, and I, I know you, you guys have done a, a really e detailed study in that. And uh, we're on day three, so you've probably heard a lot of talk, some of which you may agree with, some of which we may disagree with. But if I can uh, give you the job for a second as the first uh, uh, question to contextualize some of the comments you've heard, uh, how they tie in with your findings in the report, and to maybe give us a picture of what is really happening out there. Thank you very much for having me here. Um, well, actually, after listening to some of the sessions dealing with consumer engagement and smart metering and uh, smart grids and all that, I feel rather optimistic because I think we are on the right path to help consumers becoming more active in the energy market. And in fact, what I mean by that is you need to have a right sequence of events. First of all, you need to increase consumer um, understanding of the change you want to make and their, um, increase their confidence that they can deal with it. Uh, then you have the consumer engagement. So then you start engaging them in the process and hopefully at the end of that, you will have a consumer behavior change. And so I feel really optimistic seeing all the discussions going on and the solutions presented in this exhibition hall um, that we are getting there. And when you, uh, tell me about your report, um, because it, it's a fascinating topic. What, what are the uh, types of consumer behaviors that were, that were picked out in the report? And Actually, let me ask you a fundamental question. Why did you do the report in the first place? What were you trying to find out? That's a good question. Actually, uh, on 9th of October, we've just launched uh, a, pro um, a report called the Trends and Projections Report. And um, that was um, the moment when we said European member states are um, good, making good progress on all the three targets uh, um, that we have to fulfill until 2020, na namely the greenhouse gas emissions, uh, the energy efficiency and the renewable energy. But the energy efficiency part is lagging behind though. So if energy efficiency is such a great thing to do, I was wondering why it doesn't happen to the extent that we want it to happen. And this is uh, uh, the idea of the report. And the first thing that we found out in our report is that maybe we should shift the attention from the consumer behavior to, consumer, uh, to consumption practices because what happens is that there are a lot of factors that influence consumer behavior starting from technology, economics, culture. Um, all this uh, will influence what we perceive as our needs, our opportunities, our abilities uh, and in the end uh, it, they create some sort of an expectation of convenience. But the problem is that all these relationships are dynamic and they change over time. And history tells us that usually cons uh, consumer behavior and consumption practices as a result change um, in a way that uh, require more resources and create more environmental damage. So the impact um, and the, the importance for the policymakers is that if you focus on the consumption practices instead, you need to engage a lot more stakeholders in the process, on the policy process, right from the very beginning. And that sounds like a huge challenge because yes. what you're saying is that the old conversations aren't enough. We need to have bigger conversations across more channels, across more areas, in order to uh, get, a, get a better feel for where consumers are going uh, uh, and things like that. So, if I gave you for a second the ability to 
be a uh, what I call a magnanimous, a magnanimous dictator. So people have kind of got to listen, you, uh, but you know you don't do it in a bad way. Uh, what would you line up? What would you say? Right, you need to talk to so and so. You need to do this. You need to do that. How would you put the puzzle together? There are a few things that you can do. First of all, I think it is very important the way we actually convey the feedback. And by feedback, I mean you have uh, on, on the energy consumption and you can do it directly via PC, via smart metering co coupled with an in-home device, uh, prepaid meters. You have indirect feedback as well via the energy bills. So the raw data comes to the utility and it's processed and then sent to the consumer, etc. But what really matters, regardless of what type of feedback, is how it is delivered and whether the consumers understand the information and they feel empowered. And actually yesterday we heard um, a nice example from Australia, uh, from uh, Andrew Blaver uh, talking about the Perth Solar City. When they try to understand what their consumer want, uh, they got some surprise responses, one of which was, I want my action to really mean something. And I want to feel that I'm not the only one doing this. And that's really great because this is what shows that people uh, have different needs and different perceptions of things. Then the second thing is, uh, up to now historically, we focused a lot just on the technology or on the policy instrument that we wanted to promote, not on the change that we wanted to be affected by. Um, and that's actually uh, very important to realize. And again, uh, Andrew yesterday said a very nice thing. He said, in, when you go out and try to implement a smart meter project, don't make it a smart meter project. Make it an energy efficiency project because that changes the whole context and the uh, whole way you communicate with consumers. Then there is another issue. It's, you know, consumers do not um, react in, in isolation from the economic situation they are in. And in fact, in our study, there was um, it's a meta study, including 57 uh, studies worldwide, showing that the energy savings from feedback measures back in the period of energy crisis, which is 1974 to 1995, were far greater than the period which they call the climate change period, which was 1995 to 2010. Right. Meaning that people perceived energy uh, security far more important issue as, uh, uh, than climate change at that time. Because That's climate change was a very abstract concept to them and something far away uh, from the timeline. It w kind of makes sense though, doesn't it? Because yeah. if, if you, you, know, you have uh, 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 scenes of, uh, you only need a little thing like, uh, um, you know, in the UK when we had the, uh, the petrol strike and things like that to almost make people understand how short some of the supply chains are and what, uh, what an impact is uh, to, to make people start thinking. I mean, I, I did read that there was a, uh, there was a shift in the uh, sort of motor buying behavior of, after those events. Uh, so I don't think we want to have seismic events like that all over the place in, in order for us to uh, take more concern about our energy management. If I can for a second uh, just explore a hypothetical scenario. We are, there's, a, there's all, uh, some of the trust issues with the utilities around smart meters, uh, there's some other uh, sort of strange ideas that they're going to fry our brains and there's, there's a lot of that sort of stuff going on about which I don't necessarily subscribe to because those very same people probably got a, a Wi-Fi hub and we had that with Wi-Fi, you know, back in the day. Do you think that actually the best way to get a residential energy management is for us as residents to open up the energy management of our homes to clever technology and perhaps this idea of having an energy management tariff with my utility. So I say I pay five pound a month extra to my utility, but you manage my home. I know it'll always been run in the most efficient way. I know that's a very, a leap of faith bearing in mind the things get it, but, but is that where you think we just ought to end up or, or will end up? maybe 20, 30 years time? Well, it's actually a very good question because one thing that we need to remember is that consumers are not a homogeneous group. 
So you will have to deal with very different type of consumers. Some of them will be very keen on new technologies and will understand what that entails. Some of them, they don't. And in fact, yesterday uh, we heard from uh, Martin Wells from Cup Gemini uh, saying that it is uh, it's paying off to really take time and understand your consumer. And then once you do that, then you have to start segmentation. Segmentation was the word, word of the day yesterday, and I was very happy about it. And in fact, that also proves the findings in a survey that we have done in conjunction with our report. Um, and in our survey, we had about a thousand uh, responses, which is actually a high number uh, for our agency, uh, but that proves that energy consumption is something really close to the heart of many people. Um, we have uh, different age groups, um, different um, education level, but a relatively high education level and relatively well-off respondents. And one of the things that came up in that um, uh, survey is that, um, first of all, homeowners will respond differently than tenants. And uh, they would be much more likely to be interested in change than tenants. Therefore, my message is really focus on homeowners and forget about the home ownership, the, the landlord versus tenant dilemma. Mm. The second thing is um, age really matters. And we saw that uh, the people in the bracket 30 to 60 years uh, are likely to respond positively to traditional way of, of feedback and of measures like, for instance, a more frequent bill, more informative, uh, informative bill, or, but the young, uh, ones and the old ones, no. And so you will need to find different ways of communicating with them. And actually Martin yesterday was giving a, a, an excellent example of how using gaming uh, got a fantastic response from the consumer base. And that is, you know, this kind of innovative ways of communicating with the consumer I think will get you there. And, and, and that is where, uh, I mean, this is, this, uh generational shift is, um, I believe, and I, I've read so many things about this as well, is even more pronounced. There always is one, you know, uh, um, teenagers hate older people, it's, it's a hormone thing or whatever, but it's more than that now because I, there, there's a line between people who just work using social media and people who don't, and the whole gamification part is amazing because we're uh, talking to Opower about how uh, you can, in uh, sort of demand response platforms, create links to Facebook and things like that so you can actually brag about how much energy you're saving. And that is a whole new way of dealing with this, isn't it? It is. And uh, we shouldn't forget that there is, an, uh, for instance, another aspect to it um, when it, it's related to the income levels. Uh, one we, we have noticed from our survey is that people that are relatively well off, and uh, we mean by that between 20,000 a year and 60,000 a year, and we should not forget that 20,000 in, in uh, one country may mean different things than other countries. Yeah, it doesn't mean uh, a lot in but, London. <laughs> but people that are well off uh, generally are more likely to be engaged in this kind of programs than people that are on low income. Um, and because people on low income, they don't want to be labeled and they don't want to be stigmatized. So they won't come forward to ask for services, but they are the ones that also need a lot of services to make their energy consumption as efficient as possible. So my message really is, um, in those situations, forget about trying to identify the low income people. Uh, simply focus on the building stock that has a poor energy performance because it's very likely that that kind of building stock will shield, in fact, um, people that we uh, call vulnerable consum uh, consumers. Yeah. Because they need more they help. They need more help. But you're quite right. They don't need the help in the way of, oh, you don't earn enough money. They need help as in you know, the tone of voice, in the way you engage. Exactly. It's different. Yeah. And it is about the focusing on the living conditions rather than on the income. So we're coming to the end of our time here in the uh, studio. The, the, there'll be an obvious question to anybody watching this. How do I get hold of this report? Yeah. Uh, is that on, on your website? Yes, I would it imagine. is. So Google will do is, a good job. And the report is it. on the European Environment Agency website. And uh, soon there will be also a short paper summarizing the results from the survey that we have done on uh, public attitudes towards energy consumption. Okay. And uh, 
if you're watching this video, uh, you mentioned a number of speakers. You can find those presentations on the Angerati website. Uh, if our tech is clever enough, it may already be attaching them to this video. If not, you can always go and search for them. Your presentation will be on there, uh, 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 will be on there as well as this video. And uh, thank you very much for watching. And thank you thank for you being very much for in having the studio. Me. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.